So good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be able again to welcome you to ISMEO, the International Association for Mediterranean and Oriental Studies based in Rome in Italy. So through the organization of conferences, meetings, presentation, concerts, musical performance, archaeological missions, ISMEO promotes study, research and cultural collaboration related to countries of Asia, Africa and the Mediterranean. So at Ismail, we created this series called Oriental Music Conversation as a platform to share newest scholarly and creative work with the members and the public. My name is Salvatore Mora and I'm the music curator of Ismail. The conversation is recorded and it will last for about 40 minutes, after which we will take audience questions. At any time during the event, you can use the chat features on your screen to submit your question. And please mute yourself during the talk. So now it is my pleasure to welcome to this sixth Oriental Music Conversation Professor Jean Lambert, who is assistant professor in Musée de Lombe and research in Paris and researcher in the Centre de Research on Ethnomusicology at l'Université Nanterre. His research focuses on music in Yemen and the Arabian Peninsula, Lebanon, as well as on the history of Arab, Arab music. And one of his uh, most important and latest uh, publications is the Cairo Congress, the contribution to the Cairo Congress of Arab music, 1932 uh, uh, CDs. So welcome to this sixth conversation with the title, The First Commercial Recordings of Yemen Music, 1935-1960 and their digital patrimonialization. So, uh, welcome Jean Lambert, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Salvatore. It's really my pleasure to, uh, uh, to be invited by uh, your uh, uh, institute, and I want to, uh, uh, to thank also uh, his president, its president, uh, Mr. Uh, Rossi, and uh, also uh, uh, Sheila for helping us for the technique. And um, I, uh, I'm very glad to uh, have the opportunity to talk to uh, an Italian, uh, uh, Italian people. Uh, especially because uh, Italian people also have uh, uh, traditionally uh, very strong uh, ties with Yemen. And uh, when I was in Yemen, I had uh, so many uh, Italian people, even some who, who lived and, and, and were born in Yemen. Uh, and uh, uh, also I met uh, my colleague Giovanni Canova, uh, in Yemen, who has been also uh, producing uh, very interesting work on, uh, on oral literature in, uh, in Yemen. So, uh, these first uh, commercial recordings of Yemeni music uh, are indeed uh, an important subject uh, because um, they were uh, recorded uh, between 1935 and 1960, roughly. Uh, and so they represent um, a, a, a panorama of uh, what we have of the oldest testimony of uh, uh, music, uh, traditional music in Yemen uh, at a modern time. Actually, there are some older collections, but uh, they are more difficult of access. Some are also in, uh, have been recorded by uh, Hans Elfritz and are in the Berlin uh, Ethnologius uh, Museum. And uh, actually, uh, I'm also going to work on that, that collection. But it is almost the same time it was recorded in 1934. And it was not commercial, of course. The special uh, aspect of these recordings I want to introduce you or to present to you today is that they were commercial recordings uh, on uh, 78 RPM uh, 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 discs. Uh, so, of course, it's, uh, 
it has uh, some advantages and some inconvenience. Uh, advantages is that uh, these records, uh, because they were commercial, they have uh, uh, they were recorded in a systematic way uh, with numbers of uh, of disk, uh, number of matrix, uh, some informations about uh, the musicians on the label of the the record. Uh, as I'll show you uh, right now. Voilà. Here, for instance, you have uh, an example of a disc uh, from the Odeon Company uh, by the Sheikh Ali Abu Bakr Bashar Ahil. Uh, and this uh, disc was recorded around 1935 or 1936. Actually, we don't have uh, uh, very precise dates, but we are trying to uh, ever, to to define them uh, by indir indirect uh, ways. But I'll I'll take I'll talk uh, about that later more deeply. So these uh, 70 RPM records uh, they pr they were pressed uh, at the beginning in Germany and England. This Odeon record, for instance, was uh, uh, printed in Germany. But of course, as uh, the, uh, the preparation of the war, uh, the international relations were beginning, were becoming uh, uh, more difficult. And all these recordings have been recorded in Aden, which was a British colony, as you see. Uh, you can see uh, this. Uh, this is a contemporary uh, map, uh, but the Aden uh, territory and English territory was all this territory which was which was uh, called at certain time, like you see on the map, Republic Democratic Popular du Yemen, Democratic and Popular Republic of Yemen. Uh, so this was the territory which was occupied by the British. And you can see Aden at the end, uh, west end of this uh, territory. Uh, so the recordings were made in Aden exclusively. In the meantime, uh, you had the north part of Yemen, which was called Royaume Mutwakilit du Yemen, and then Republic Arab du Yemen, uh, which was uh, very different because it had uh, stayed uh, independent. It had been occupied by, by the Ottomans until the beginning of the 20th century, but then it became uh, independent and it was um, uh, under the sovereign of Yemen. It was a kingdom, of course, huh? a royaume, uh, and, uh, but it was a theocratic uh, kingdom and usually the imam uh, who was leading this kingdom uh, were, were not uh, very fond of music for uh, religious and reasons. They were puritan. And so uh, they were forbidding actually uh, instrumental music. And uh, uh, so, of course, uh, these recordings would, could not have been uh, made uh, in North Yemen. So it was called North Yemen. <coughs> these recordings could not have been uh, done in North Yemen. And this is why they were done uh, in Aden, very close to uh, actually to, uh, to this uh, kingdom, uh, but uh, out of end of the uh, Puritan uh, Imam. So this was one of the first of the main interests of these recordings also that they could let uh, uh, scatter this uh, music uh, in a commercial way from the south, Aden and the rest, uh, towards the north. And indeed, uh, some recordings were uh, uh, scattered to the north uh, clandestinely 
uh, they say uh, many people I, I met in Yemen uh, in the 80s, 90s told me that uh, they were hiding the records uh, on the back of a donkey and under, under uh, a pouch uh, uh, which was uh, uh, donk on, the, on the donkey's back and, and the records were carried from Aden to uh, the north and they were played uh, in some villages uh, far away from the, the central government uh, during uh, wedding parties, for instance. So um, it was really uh, an important uh, phenomena for Yemeni culture to, uh, to be uh, involved in uh, the globalization, which was already uh, taking care uh, taking part uh, in Aden uh, and in a uh, very special uh, interaction with this uh, North uh, territory, which was uh, closed uh, up to this globalization. Um, so we will uh, listen a little bit to this uh, music. Uh, we will listen to this uh, first uh, musician. Uh, I show you his picture. Uh -huh. Can't see the picture. Sure. Well, you can see uh, the picture of Ali, ba uh, Ali uh, Sheikh Ali Bak Abu Bakr. Basharahil, I hope you find the, the full screen. Well, ah, I'm sorry because it's difficult to get <laughs> the picture on the full screen. So I'm obliged to keep the full screen. This is the picture of Sheikh Ali Abu Bakr Basharahil. And I'll let you uh, listen to him right now. I hope the sound is good. Okay, I hope uh, you could hear the, the music well. Yes. Yeah, it was good? Okay. Uh, alors, this music needs uh, actually a few comments because um, uh, the instrument you could hear was played by the singer himself, so it's a solo. And this instrument is very special. It is uh, this instrument, the, which is called the kambus, um, which is, it's a lute, uh, but a very special lute, which uh, uh, used to be very important in the Arab world uh, for many centuries, and which uh, disappeared actually uh, during, and gradually during uh, the 20th century. Uh, in Aden, 
this uh, Sheikh Ali Abu Bakr uh, Bashar al Ahil was one of the last ones which were uh, recorded. In Sana'a, uh, curious, strangely enough, actually, uh, because I told you uh, music and instruments were forbidden, but actually, um, there were people who played clandestinely also. So uh, the picture you can see is, uh, is not uh, Sheikh Abu Bakr Bashar Ahil. It's another musician from Sana'a, but it is the same instrument. And he was, uh, the picture was uh, taken in the, in the 70s of the 20th century. So, um, so one of the great interests also of this uh, collection is to have uh, these testimonies of the, these last testimonies of the instrument uh, in Aden in the 30s. Um, now we will uh, uh, pass to uh, another uh, company. Actually, I have to say that uh, uh, these recordings were made uh, at the beginning, just before the World War, uh, by uh, one or two foreign companies. One of them was Odeon, which was a very fa famous one which was ger German at the beginning and then the German English. Uh, but before the war, actually, uh, or the coming of the war, uh, this company uh, withdrew uh, from Yemen and uh, there were local uh, companies which, take, uh, which took over this uh, activity. So, of course, it's also a, a, a major uh, achievement and a major uh, change uh, for Yemen that local people uh, were able very quickly, actually a few years after the beginning, uh, they were able to uh, take over uh, this activity with, uh, of course, uh, uh, some uh, technical uh, know-how uh, which were not uh, so easy uh, to uh, to get at that time uh, recording music was uh, still very new and um, and so they were able to create a few uh, local companies one of them was this uh, Aden Crown Records uh, in Arabic Istwanat uh, Taj al Adani uh, you can see uh, here uh, the label, the blue uh, label, which was uh, characteristic. Um, and uh, uh, the crown, actually, we, we don't know exactly the date of this uh, record, but we know that uh, the, colo the British colony uh, <coughs> became in 1937. Uh, the crown, uh, the crown colony, or there was a, 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 an official uh, uh, denomination like this: the crown, crown, I didn't crown, crown colony, something like that. So it means that probably uh, the uh, foundation of this uh, local company uh, happened just after. Uh, this uh, political change, so probably in 1937 or 98. Uh, so you see uh, how we are compelled to uh, find in indirect uh, uh, clues uh, for uh, dating uh, all this uh, material, which is really not easy. There are also, I must mention, some catalogues, some very rare catalogues. Uh, I have one of them for this uh, company, but unfortunately, there were there was no date, and uh, this is uh, also noticeable because, uh, uh, for instance, when you 
when we, we, we make research on uh, first recordings in Egypt, for instance, the catalogs in Egypt or in Turkey also, they have uh, dates uh, from uh, 1904, 95, you know, uh, but it is not the case uh, in Yemen, so it shows also a very uh, special uh, feature of the um, Yemeni uh, culture, which at that time were not was not very much uh, concerned with dates, so with chronology, with history, you know. <coughs> okay. So I will let, let you uh, listen to, again to uh, this uh, singer and musician. His name is uh, Ahmed Obed Al Qatabi. He plays the lute, like you can see. Uh, so of course it's very different from uh, the Khanbus, and uh, you will listen to it uh, carefully. Mm. Will... PowerPoint. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's not shared. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay. Is it shared? Not yet. Not yet? Um, votre écran est partagé par le biais de l'application. Yeah, the, the wrong screen. You share uh, screen, but not the PowerPoint. You're sharing the Zoom. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and like that? Yes. Ah, good, good. I'm sorry. So I was think just after uh, this Aden Crown record I uh, presented, which was uh, the first local company, and also this uh, uh, envelope. Yeah. Uh, so I was, uh, I wanted to let you uh, listen to this uh, Ahmed El Khatabi who is playing lute. Uh, so I play it right now. So I guess you can uh, make the difference uh, easily, at least uh, those who are acquainted with the uh, Oud, uh, like Salvatore, uh, you can make the difference easily between this and the Kanbus, of course. Is it okay? Can you hear? Uh, you were able to listen? Yes. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, so, um, this Ahmed Khatabi, it was a little bit later than the first one, uh, probably around 1940. And, and now we are uh, arriving to the time of the war. Uh, but here uh, it's very interesting to uh, study another company, which was called Jafar Fon, in Arabic Jafar Fon. Uh, this record you can see now. Um, as you see, 
see it's a yellow one. And then, and as I told you, uh, we don't have uh, uh, explicit uh, information about the diachrony. Uh, so, of course, when I see uh, two recordings uh, with different colors, I am. Uh, <laughs> we we are uh, interested to see if uh, maybe it's a two different periods or not. You know, and indeed. Uh, Although uh, for the Adenkron, the previous one, uh, there were different colors, but they were not uh, relevant uh, about the time. For Jafferphone, they are relevant, so it's very interesting. Actually, the yellow, uh, it was all deductions because I, we, 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 there, we don't have any direct information. But we uh, reached the conclusion that Jafferphone yellow uh, was before the war, which means probably 1938-1939, when the purple one was after the war, and we found actually uh, one or two press articles which mention that Jafferfon is uh, resuming its activity in uh, recording music, uh, in uh, 1949, 1950, which is already five years after the end of the war. So, of course, uh, this company um, uh, draws uh, our attention uh, because it was able, actually, to... Uh, it's, it was uh, obliged, of course, to stop its activities uh, during the war but they were able to uh, resume these activities after the war. Uh, this is the only company, actually, uh, that we know in Yemen which was able to do that. The Adenkron company that I mentioned before uh, disappeared uh, before the, 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 the war, and uh, that was it. Jafferfon, no. And why? Actually, it's very interesting because uh, he, the Jaffer phone was uh, founded by a man whose uh, father was already uh, making trading, trading uh, uh, records, but foreign recordings or Arab re uh, recordings were, which were imported to Aden. So this uh, Mr. Jaffer uh, began to uh, record himself, and then when it stopped tentatively a few years after, uh, there was his brother, this Mr. Taha Mohammed Hamoud, who founded another company which was called Taha Phone, that you can see now. Here's the Taha Phone, sorry. Voilà. This is Tahafon. So actually, this Tahafon is uh, made by the brother of the Jafar phone. So that explains you uh, that there was a certain continuity because it was a whole family which was uh, interested in uh, recording music. Uh, so uh, all these informations, of course, they are get uh, we got them. Uh, uh, indirectly. Now, um, I want to introduce you uh, through Jarfafon to a very uh, another very interesting uh, uh, phenomena, which is the apparition of theater in Yemen. Because in Yemen there was no theater uh, before. Uh, there was no. Uh, tradition of a theater, although, of course, uh, there were some uh, tales, there were some uh, oral uh, literature, uh, some epics, uh, but there was, uh, there was no theater. And actually, the Jafar Fon company lets us uh, discover the beginnings of the theater probably with the influence of the, of the British, but also the influence of the Egyptian theater. And so we have uh, an interesting recordings of 
Majnun wa Layla, that we will listen to now. You can hear me, everything is okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is Majnun Layla, uh, prayed uh, probably during uh, around the 1934, 5, 6, or 7, or 8, we're not sure. So I, I, I just make a little comment so that you understand. Uh, it's obviously, I don't know exactly the details, but uh, according to what we listen, uh, there is uh, Leila, as you know, in the, in the story, uh, Leila is uh, in love with Majnoon, Majnoon which means uh, the fool is uh, fully in love with Leila. But uh, the, the father of Leila uh, doesn't allow her to uh, marry uh, Majnoon because Majnoon is a, a low class guy or maybe also because he's a foolish uh, guy. So uh, the recording is the Leila uh, 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 weeping and screaming because her father doesn't want her to see or to marry uh, Majnoon. Here's the recording. <laughs> So he, he says to her that he is a father, and he says to her, uh, "Thanks God, we are we got uh, rid of this uh, Majnoon," and so she's again she's going to scream. So as you can uh, hear, uh, the you can hear me. Is okay? Yes, it's okay. Yeah, good. So uh, as you can, you could hear uh, the the the. It's of course it's uh, sung theater, uh, and. Uh, uh, there, it's mixed, of course, between speaking and, uh, and, and singing. Of course, the music is uh, rather traditional at that time, not very complicated. Uh, not many instruments. As you can know, uh, as you may know, uh, it was difficult actually to record uh, uh, many instruments with, uh, on the 78 RPM uh, record. Uh, here we have a little bit more because before we have only one voice and one lute. Uh, here we have a little bit more uh, instruments. Probably the technique also improved uh, gradually and uh, allowed uh, to record more instruments. So this um, this is a really an interesting testimony of uh, the presence of uh, theater uh, in the 30s in Yemen.
uh, also uh, uh, a, a trace of uh, modernization and uh, and uh, creation of new uh, cultural activities. Then, as I told you, we had uh, uh, this Taha phone record. So it was much before, much after the, the Second World War. It was created in maybe, maybe 1953. And then there was uh, other records, like this one, uh, which was called Istwanat uh, al-Janoub al-Arabi, the Arabic uh, South. Uh, records, so it was uh, during the 50s or so. So, um, Aden was still a British uh, colony, but it has changed the name. It was called uh, Al Janoub Al Arabi, the, the, Ar the Arabian South. And as you can see, the, the label, uh, the company takes uh, the same, uh, <coughs> sorry, the same uh, name as uh, the political uh, entity. Some records have been done also um, abroad uh, in India, like this one, uh, this Canary records. Uh, it was uh, uh, a Yemen, uh, Yemeni singer from Hadramaut, uh, recorded in India, and even sometimes in uh, Indonesia, like this uh, record from Odeon, Indonesia. Uh, some Yemeni uh, records. Um, so I wanted to um, uh, complete this uh, very quick uh, uh, presentation of these records by a short reflection on uh, the uh, preservation of these uh, recordings. Uh, you must know that in uh, in Yemen, in Sana'a, since our here is uh, my colleague uh, Rafik uh, Akuri, who actually uh, contributed to this work. So I uh, was uh, keen to uh, show him to you. Uh, he is the head of the Yemeni Center for Musical Heritage, uh, which was founded in Sana'a in uh, in the 90s, in the 1990s. And this uh, center was, uh, this is a picture of the center. This is a page, the Facebook picture. <coughs> and the inside of this center, uh, this center was able actually to gather a wide collection of these records. Uh, in the 90s and uh, above all, uh, 2000, 2010, uh, a big collection of these uh, of these records, and then uh, my colleague Rafik uh, Akuri uh, created uh, um, a YouTube uh, uh, channel. So actually, some of these recordings can be uh, listened to. Uh, on YouTube, on this uh, YCMH in English, uh, YCMH Center, uh, with uh, so so many uh, recordings uh, available uh, on YouTube. Actually, uh, aside uh, this uh, activity, which was uh, uh, fathered by the the Ministry of uh, Culture in Yemen. Uh, and since only almost 10 years now, we have uh, other uh, YouTube channels or other sites which are also uh, publishing uh, some of these uh, old recordings. Here you have a, a famous chain which is called Aiden Vintage. Uh, so you can see the the nice uh, calligraphy upon the drawing of the ode. <coughs> Aden Vitej, uh, it explains well uh, the purpose of this chain, which is uh, to uh, present uh, old uh, recordings uh, made in Aden or from uh, Aden of source uh, uh, Yemen music. 
so actually, um, as you know as well, unfortunately, since uh, 2011, uh, the political situation in Yemen uh, become, became uh, unstable. And uh, or moreover, in 2015, uh, it was uh, uh, a real war which uh, uh, burst in Yemen. And so, of course, it has been very difficult uh, to gather uh, all these archives. And actually, the center I mentioned, uh, uh, this center in Sana'a, uh, has been jeopardized and the collections are in danger. And so we decided with uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Akuri, uh, to, um, to make, uh, 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 to try to preserve these uh, recordings, uh, making pro benefit uh, of the uh, many recordings we could find on the net. So this is what I uh, uh, called uh, the digital uh, patrimonialization, or maybe more bluntly, the wide patrimonialization on the net, which um, uh, affords, on, on one hand, it affords uh, media, many material much material online, so it's a facility, uh, it, it, uh, it facilitates uh, this uh, uh, inventory uh, activity. But of course, on the other hand, uh, it is not reliable, it is not, very often it is not well documented. So our main uh, uh, purpose uh, in this project is to document as much as possible all these recordings, these wild recordings. So we are working with uh, my colleague on this uh, uh, the database, which you can see to uh, Put it on full uh, screen. Sorry, it takes time. The center, and then well, this is a database. So we are, we are. Uh, of course, it's a very classic, classic database with the name of the song, uh, the name of the musician, the company, the number of the disc. So, of course, these are very valuable uh, informations because we have the name of the companies and the numbers. And sometimes also we have the matrix numbers, so it, may, it can be more precise. And then where is uh, this record, so some of them were in the center, so there is a column about that. And then we have uh, also uh, a column for uh, links. So actually, uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, around 800 uh, titles. Uh, not all uh, are uh, in our position, but uh, at least we have the informations and we gather all the informations and we try to share uh, these informations with all the people who are uh, interested in uh, in this topic and uh, thanks to the links we can uh, listen to uh, the music uh, as much as possible so for these 800 records we have around 300, 400 links. So at least uh, it's not bad. Of course, it's, uh, it's not enough and we are working uh, very hard with my colleague to enlarge uh, this collection and to make it uh, more accessible to more people uh, for, for collaboration actually, because this kind of... Uh,
uh, activity. If it's not related, uh, my colleague in Yemen, myself in France, uh, other people maybe in other countries. So um, this is a, a huge work, uh, really not easy, and we are trying also to find uh, uh, founding uh, sources. Uh, and we hope uh, that this project will, uh, at some point, uh, get uh, the visibility and the publicity which it deserves. So, um, I don't know if I will uh, go on maybe on this, uh, expo ex this, uh, this lecture or maybe I will uh, uh, stop uh, here and uh, I would be very glad to, uh, to uh, answer to all your questions. And maybe if you want, we can uh, listen to more music. Uh, it's up to you, but I think now it's uh, it's not. It, it can be uh, a good time to to make a pause and uh, listen to your questions. I thank you uh, very much for your attention. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Professor Lambert, and. Um, very very much uh, uh, fascinating fascinating pro uh, project in fact uh, uh, there's also many parallels with uh, you know with the, with the archives um, of, of Arab music for example the one in based in uh, in Sidi Bou Said uh, for example in, in in Tunisia and the the, the, the work of uh, of the teams of uh, Tunisian musicologists who go every day there to uh, to listen to recordings and documents them uh, uh, since um, since well, the project started by Anastasia. Could you maybe uh, could you hold, maybe just uh, come out from the um, uh, from the sharing? Yeah, yeah, right. So like, you can see me. So we can voilà. see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Voilà. Merci. Merci. So it's a, it's a great project. I mean. Uh, uh, many questions uh, first on on the I have many questions first on the uh, on the recordings, but uh, maybe we can we can start discussing this this project. I mean, what in what stages uh, at the moment this this catalog you showed us? I mean, are you sharing? Are you already sharing it uh, um, around with the researchers, or um, what kind of stage is that? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's uh, it's already shared. Uh... Uh, on a platform, uh, a French platform for research in the CNRS, the platform called the uh, HAL SHS, if you know it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's already uh, shared in this way, but of course it's only uh, a very narrow, uh, little uh, number of people who are uh, specialized and interested. Uh, and uh, it's not uh, definite, uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something uh, really uh, on on the go. Yes, of course, it's, it's very it's, it's very long process of, of documenting the recordings. And, yeah, um, yeah. There we yeah. have also actually. Uh, uh, myself and my colleague, uh, Mr. Akuri, we have a huge uh, uh, collection of records which are not on, in, on the net. So now our, uh, we are also um, in front of a certain challenge, which is uh, our choice, you know, to make. Are we going to uh to to put all what we have on the net or maybe to make a local archiving before uh it is um, you know this is kind of uh, difficult choices we have to make and we, that will also depend on the founding we will find because it needs a lot of time as you know uh, the digital uh, Digitalizing is uh, is a very uh, consuming, uh, uh, time-consuming work. So um, 
yeah, we are uh, at uh, that kind of step. You know, we could feel much more uh, material, but until now, and share it, but until now, we are not able of to do of doing it because of uh, time and money. Yes, so are the recordings digitized there in the archive in, uh, in Aden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. This, uh, this is a, a big part of them which are digitized. So that's uh, the, the, the problem is how either we make, you know, okay, uh, we put them, if for instance, we can put them on the YouTube chain of the center, which is very easy, you know, some of them definitely, but maybe we don't want to. Uh, to, to put that many things on the net. So maybe we could, I don't know if we could share them uh, in a kind of, of intranet, you know, between a sort of circle of researchers. It's, um, it's there are many technical aspects to so that I, I, frankly, I don't master them that much, but uh, we have to think about these kind of things. Do, do you mean a network of archive? And, yeah, archive? An in, yeah, a net which would be only uh, between uh, the researchers, you know, at least in the first step. Yes, I, I was I, I was aiming the fact that maybe some other institutions or phonographic archives in the Arab world, maybe the one, the famous one. Yeah, in yeah, of course, we can share uh, this kind of stuff uh, with uh, with uh, formal and scientific institutions, you know, uh, at least in the first step, uh, so that uh, it would be easier to work to exchange information. Yeah. Lots of many, uh, lots of technical problems of course but uh, so let's yeah. let's talk about the music more i mean uh, what well, yeah, so we saw gumbus so we saw uh, an oud and uh, so yeah. what other what other um, uh, common musical instruments that were recorded or what kind of instrument were most common recorded uh, it was mainly uh, kambus uh, oud and uh, sometimes uh, they are also accompanied uh, accompanied by uh, violin uh, so, um, it's uh, violin obviously uh, began to be introduced in Yemeni music uh, at the beginning of the, in the 20s, uh, around in the 1920s, you know. Uh, so, that was m the main uh, instruments. Be why? Because they were the uh, urban music instruments. So all, this is something I didn't mention in my lecture, but uh, uh, of course uh, the main uh, music which was recorded was urban music, not so much uh, rural music. And this is, uh, of course, you can understand it, that uh, usually um, the same process happened in Morocco, in Egypt, uh, at the beginning they were mostly recording uh, urban uh, music and actually uh, uh, for in Morocco uh, I know fairly well because I was a Moroccan student <coughs> sorry uh, you can see that they, they recorded the first urban music and then they began to record the rural music and because also because in Morocco there was a special interest uh, and special recognition to uh, Berber music, for instance, you can see that uh, from the 30s, 40s, uh, they begin to uh, record a lot of uh, uh, Berber music. But in Yemen, uh, it didn't happen because uh, probably the, uh, the impulse, the first impulse of uh, 78 uh, discs uh, fade out in the 50s and uh, so there were there were other um, regions which were recorded like Hadramaut for instance which had not been recorded at the beginnings so in the 50s they recorded the Hadramaut but also urban music not popular music and it's only with the cassette actually in the 50s in the 70s uh, that uh, popular music with uh, you know 
euh, clarinette, euh, euh, mizmar, euh, euh, rababa, uh, things which are popular, uh, at, at last were uh, recorded and discovered uh, by the public, a larger public than the, the local where they were played uh, the, in, as live uh, music. So it's a, in, it's a very interesting um, process, you know, how uh, the technique and the commercial uh, networks helped or didn't help uh, to a certain kind of music to be discovered by the people in their own country. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, of course. Also, in fact, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious about also the role of the producer, maybe, uh, which yeah. uh, influenced also the recording. You know, do, do we know any information? Do we have any information about yeah. the producer? Yeah, exactly. And, That's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I began to to mention that you know the two main uh, record company, Ed and Crown, and Jafarfon. Uh, uh, there were uh, two. Uh, uh, mainly uh, traders' uh, families, which were from Aden. They were all the citizen, citizens, you know, urban uh, uh, people. And so they were interested uh, more in urban music than in uh, uh, country music, you know. And this is why, of course, uh, they, uh, they recorded this uh, music first. Uh, so, Sana was recorded first, Sana Ani song, but, but from Aden. Then Lahaj, there is, uh, Lahaj is a, a town very, very close to uh, Aden, with, but we, which was uh, very rich in, uh, in uh, traditional music. And then Hadramaut, uh, you know, east uh, of Yemen, uh, mostly in the 50s. So there was, there was like that, a kind of gradual discovering with different companies, actually. And the last companies who recorded in Hadramaut, they were Hadrami people, Hadrami uh, merchants. <coughs> so it's not by, uh, by hazard, you know. And it explains that. Yes, yes, thank you. So many, many difficulties of dating, I see. Yeah. Many difficulties of dating the, Incredible. the recordings. Incredible. Actually, the only way to uh, we will solve these problems will be uh, maybe to find a few other catalogs, but I doubt there will be any dating, but it helps, still it can help. And also the most uh, useful source is the press. So when we found uh, already a few uh, uh, copies of, uh, of the press in Aden in the 40s, 50s. Here we found a few dates. Uh, but we don't have press from the 30s and 20s. Uh, there is, but it's in Yemen and this is war, so it's not accessible, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes, it's an amazing, uh, it's an, it's an amazing project. Congratulations again. And, um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, because I saw some some were printed in uh, in Syria. There was one in, in the Jaffa phone, I think, was printed in Syria, which ah yes, the, 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 the yellow one, question. the yellow cover one was printed in Syria. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. You you have seen well. Uh, this is another mystery. <laughs> um, at the beginning, when I discovered that, uh, he thought. It could be that they had been recording during the war. Um, that would have been a very interesting discovery, you know, that all oh, Yemenis, uh, even during the war, they were, be, they were able to record, maybe going in another country to, to make the recordings, you know. <laughs> Uh, then uh, he made uh, some other um, connections and I discovered that uh, there were also some uh, Kuwaitian recordings in Aleppo. <clears throat> um, actually in a Syrian uh, company, which is called... Uh, um, 
sorry. Uh, which is called uh, for I cannot find the name, but I'll, I'll tell you later. And uh, so obviously the the style of the label is from this com Syrian company, but the, the name is Jaffa phone. So obviously they were recorded in kind of cooperation. But it seems that it was not during the war, it was probably in the last uh, 30s or 35, 36, because there were also some uh, Kuwaitian people recorded in this uh, Syrian company in Aleppo. And actually we can, we found that uh, the, um, the violent player uh, who plays with the Yemeni uh, musician is uh, from Aleppo. Is an, uh, so obviously it was done in Aleppo, but with the name of the company, which still so shows that there was a, a cooperation, a commercial cooperation. So it's interesting. If you are interested, I can let you uh, listen to it. Would you like? Yes, thank you. We can we can close yeah. The, yeah. the the seminar with the, with the listening. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, but, I, but I don't want I don't want also to take too much time. If there are other questions, of course, please uh, tell me what is the best if, if somebody wants to ask a question. No, I think uh, it's um, well. It's a little bit late. So many people have left. Uh, I think the 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 room okay. at the moment. So we can, okay. um, so uh, we can listen to it, huh? Yeah, yeah we Which can pleasure. listen to it and, and close yeah. the session. Yeah, right? it's very interesting also because it is from Hadramaut, the singer, and it seems that he plays Kambus. I'm not sure. It's not written, unfortunately. But if it is the case, it is very, very, very much interesting because actually we know that this Kambus was played in Hadramaut but we don't have any single record until now from Hambus played by uh, Hadramaut uh, musician. And as long as I listen, I say it is uh, Hambus, but it's not absolutely sure. So we we'll listen to it. <laughs> Voilà. So, you, as you can hear, huh, it's a strange. Uh, I don't know how you feel the the sound, but uh, uh, for me, it doesn't sound like a uh, oud. No, it sounds like uh, a Yes, you're right. uh, you, you you have the same impression, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, I'm 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 uh, very happy to have your impression <laughs> because it's difficult, you know, to 
to uh, sometimes to make sure. <laughs> yes, that's uh, that's great. Thank you very much for uh, for uh, for this uh, for this talk, for the presentation, and uh, congratulations for the project again, and uh, good luck for the for the development of uh, of this amazing project. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. I close it here. Thank you, Jean. Thank, thank you. Me. I wish you all the best, and uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, in real, not only uh, in virtual. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.